I'm uh, opening a fat pack. So this is a fat pack for uh, uh, well, they're not called fat packs anymore. They're called uh, gift bundles, and uh, someone kindly gave me one, so I'm going to open it. Um, so, uh, so, so I don't really have a setup properly, but. I'm going to see if I can do this just on my phone. So it's all going to look a bit like the Braille Witch Project. Um, wait, uh, oh. So I haven't done an unboxing for a while. Um, anyway, uh, here I go. Alright. Uh, so it's very shiny. Um, is uh, like there's lots of dinosaurs in Ixalan. They've also got a time with Jurassic Park. Uh, so sort of Jurassic Park when it first came out in uh, 1995, I think. Around then, <laughs> it's got a, uh, the thing that shut down the computer uh, in the first movie on the side, which is cool. Is there any other? Oh, the thing in the uh, uh, Jurassic World, the big. Uh, Oh, I don't know what you'd call that. Uh, I don't think it's an actual dinosaur. I think it's one of those genetic dinosaurs. They sort of actually moved there in the third movie. Oh, okay. Oh, let's see what else we've got. Uh, we've got Hit the Mother Load, which it tells you on the back you get one of these in funny art, uh, which is pretty cool. You discover 10. Um, and um, uh, so if you get less than 10 money, you get that many in treasures. Uh, so I think there's lands in that one. Oh, there's another one. Uh, oh, there's something else in here. Oh, all right, this is something. Right, let's see if I can do this one hand. Right, oh, here we go. Mm, no, putting the photo well. up. Okay, so that was uh, tokens and basic lands in full arts in the kind of, uh, I'd say it's kind of like a, what do you call it? Uh, Pre-Columbian civilizations in South America sort of style is sort of, I think, their aim. And Well, being for Australia, I think they pulled it off. So you get one collector booster in this. So I'll just pause it again while I open it. So, uh, uh, no. I'll have so here's uh, the pack. Uh, we go. Uh, All right, so we got a foil. Um, how do you work? Oral Otterclans landmark, marauding brine fan, fanatical offering, uh, abysmal gene stealer. Uh, Alakwaki, the seething tower, is pretty good. He gets bigger as he as you descend more, so he. Um, it costs three mana. Uh, uh, over the edge. Uh, I'll do it this way. Ruin lurker bats. Uh, a foil planes in the funny arts. I like this guy a lot. I like this picture too with his big friend. He's like, uh, so he's, oh, it's the son of uh, the big dinosaur. Rah, he's like the little child. That's all. Uh, a friend of mine is really keen on this card. He, he gets stunned if you don't have another dinosaur. We've got a full arts, um, unstable life bridge. I'm assuming it does something with uh, flips. Crafts to flip. Uh, golems. Okay, I thought it did something with gnomes. Okay, this one's cool. So this is a piratey card with a bunch of goblins. So it has Menace Haste. Sacrifice another creature or artifact. Uh, this deals damage equal to 2 plus the sacrifice permanent's mana value to any target. Yeah, that's cool. Boast. Oh, okay, so when it attacks it does that. But it can do it straight away. Uh, so what is... Oh, we got a Jurassic Park. Uh, but this isn't this one, which this is 
Pugnacious Hammer Skull. Whenever Pugnacious Hammer Skull attacks, while you don't control another dinosaur, put oh, okay, it's the same guy. It's just in full art. And we've got Jurassic Park. Whoa! Uh, so this is Grim Gigantosaurus. Uh, it's got a well, it's a big guy, he's 10 10. He's not legendary, but he's the one at the end who fights the T Rex. That's the um, last movie of Jurassic World 3. Uh, I'm guessing they'll go to Jurassic Universe next time they do one. Uh, so this is. looks cool, it's called Fabrication Foundry. Oh, I thought that flipped. Uh, treasure. A sort of little statue and a bat. <laughs> uh, I think vampires make those. All right, I'll start on the set boosters. All right, so the first booster uh, has a art card of a uh, green blue merfolk. Um, uh, it's a uh, one of these lands. Uh, um, we've got Discover Four Lands. I'm just going to put. Uh, okay, so these are the commons and uncommons. Oh, we got the uh, uh, an art card, and it was the art card was also in the pack. Um, I think white and blue are a bit worse than um, when you draft than uh, red, green, and black in this set. I think, uh, even though I like the idea of like playing with little gnomey things. All right, so our first card from this set that is a rare, and it's. Uh, it is a Kazuki Flanker. I said, don't, don't even remember it. cats being such a thing in. Um, oh, I've got a sign here. I don't know why. Um, cats being such a thing in um, Ixalan the first time. Oh, well. Alright, so this is. This has Flash. Flash Gordon. Anyway, um, and enters the battlefield, choose one, put a 1-1 counter on this guy. Uh, for each creature that left the battlefield under your control this turn, you gain two, or you choose one, gain two life and scry two, or exile target plays graveyard. Doesn't seem bad at all. Um, it may even, yeah, it's got a lot of different utilities. Um, yeah, flash is always good too. All right, um, this is... Changeling Hero, he's a 4-4 with lifelink and champion's a creature. And he has uh, every creature chart being a changeling. He's an old card from a lower one. Uh, and this one, which I think is quite a good card, sorry. This is Jade Light Spelunker. It's got X in green and it explores X times. Starts as a 1-1. All right, on to the next pack. Okay, so these are the commons, uncommons. Oddly enough, there was the Icevunt's Iceberg. It's after the uncommons. I don't know how often that happens. Maybe it's because it's a flip card that happens. And the art card is this cool card. I think it's cool. It looks like a statue-y thing. Um, all right, so the foil this time is uh, Walk With The Ancestors. It discovers four, and you return target permanent from your graveyard to your hand. I don't think it's a particularly good card, personally, that one. Uh, this card's good, though. Belligerent Healy. I like that guy a lot. <laughs> uh, and the card is Kite Sail Larcenist. He's a flying ward pirate. That uh, turns something into a treasure, I believe, when he enters. Okay, on to the next. Alright, this is the next pack. Uh, so, a braid. A braid's a standout. In basically, whatever set it on this sort of appears in. This guy's a standout too, I think, actually. Rushing Bronzodon. He's pretty big. The guy next to him is kind of one of the better blue cards, I think. Uh, black is, I think black's just good all round in this, like, I'm trying to think if there's many bad black cards, or even bad red cards, like this guy, he's pretty good, and he discards and draws a card, and when he becomes tapped, this guy's actually, I think, quite a playable, 
Um, there's a 3-4 for uh, 4, and he also has, uh, whenever he attacks, exile target from, from an opponent's graveyard, which can be useful in this set. Okay, so we've got full art of the blue whites um, creature land that makes maps when it attacks. Uh, we've got this vampire cleric. Uh, if he does something with bats, no, no vampires tokens he makes somehow. All right, I don't know how many ways there are to actually abuse this guy. He's the uh, white creature, which is a two. Uh, Two and a white, and untap uh, this guy during each other player's untap step. I don't know if there's like... Hmm. There's a thing where you pay to tap a creature, but... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if there's many ways to actually abuse this mechanic. Or is it really just vigilance in this set? And then we've got a list card, and we've got... I don't know if I've seen this before. Fallen Idol. So this is from... I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's a set where there's Myriad in one of the Planeswalker things. Enchanting creature is flying and sacrifice a creature. This creature gets 2-1 until end of turn. When Fallen Ideal is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, return Fallen Ideal to its owner's hand. Okay. So it's like those... Uh, there were a whole bunch, actually, in... There's a saga that um, there was one that had went flying that did that. Uh, yeah, I think there were like a whole s five ones for each color. Um, they've done other things with that similar sort of thing. Um, uh, like one with trample. Uh, oh, rancor, rancor. Yeah, rancor. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Anyway, on to the next one. Okay, so. Uh, these are the set of common and uncommons. Do we have an art card in every pack? Maybe you get that in every pack. This is the, sorry, uh, an alternate art. This is the art cards. Uh, Magic has great art. I'm glad they uh, get to sign their name for everything. I think that's a really good thing Wizards does. Um, I feel sorry for the people who obviously... Wizards has let go recently. I do like all the, like, the basic land cycling stuff. I think that's good. I think they're great cards. Um, I'm going to go with the foil first this time. So this is a card where it's return to a creature with minor value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's an interesting one. Um. There's definitely like a recurring thing. So this is a quite a good card. It allows you to discover. Uh, the, the back is, I think, the better side in a sense. Uh, well, yeah, yeah. Um, so whenever you cast a permanent spell using mana produced by this land, uh, you discover X, where X is that spell's mana value. On the other one, it's uh, discard a certain, you know, X number of cards and draw that many plus one. So it replaces itself. Um, so you've got to descend for th in three turns. So you so basically have a card go into your graveyard that's a permanent. Um, yeah, so it's not that hard to achieve. Um, yeah, it's an interest. Hey, um, so this is the next pack. I've actually had this big... Uh, uh, elephant uh, be played against me that plays well in modern so he is uh, bizarrely playable in modern as a one-off it was actually pretty damn good uh, not so sure it'll work so well without like um, fury in the format uh, uh, it's, yeah I think it's actually a pretty cool thing for an elephant token too this thing um I like this spell too. This is quite a good spell. It deals two damage or the greatest power among dinosaurs you control. Um, yeah, I think that's a standout like red card because um, you often have dinosaurs just no matter what, almost almost in red. Um, yeah, 
It's kind of like, whoa, how big is that for four mana now? Like, used to just get, like, that's a four, five, you know, uh, with abilities. All right. Well, with key weight abilities. Uh, there's this guy. He's pretty good, too. Like, you generally have that if you're red, especially red pirate sort of strategy, especially red blue. Um, So, there's this guy, he's a very big creature normally, um, yeah, um, what else was I going to say, yeah, um, White actually has a lot of, like, it has Jani, it has, uh, Siren, it has a lot of the, uh, non-human creatures in some ways that are Planeswalkers, uh, this chap, uh, Nahiri, um, uh, yeah, whereas white, like, it has a high, um, like, human, uh, like, they're normal creatures, a lot of them are human, you know, um, whereas a lot of the other colours do have a lot more options there, normally, uh, like, you obviously have, like, other ones in other creature types with this, like, blue has a lot of humans, uh, you could even argue, like, Tesserets, uh, is a human, you know, it's an artifact human, but, you know, he's a human, uh, and like Jace is a human, Liliana's a human, there's some other black, black has a few different ones, but, but white has a particularly high human count, but even though it's human, there's a, oh, there's a standard archetype in modern, you know, uh, all right, on to the next one. Ooh, three more to go. Oh, wait, I wasn't recording, sorry. Wasn't recording then. I'm not sure where that went. So these are the ones in this one. Um, this is an Azara. It's from, um, I believe, Jumpster. It has Menace. It's Callus Fight Fixer. It's an Azara Warlock legendary creature. Whenever you sacrifice a creature, you may play blue or black. If you do, draw a card. Uh, sacrifice a creature and this creature gains indestructible 4 3. Okay, so I got a signed art card and pretty cool arts. Got a dinosaur. Um, oh no, I thought that was a rare. I don't even think I've seen these guys yet. Uh, so tap to untap artifacts and or creatures you control. This deals one damage to each. Oh, yes, I have seen that. I haven't played with it, but um, this is a bomb actually, this one. This one red, until end of turn, attacking creature gains trample. Whenever this creature deals coming down to play, destroy target artifact that player controls. Yeah, it's, it's just great, you know, just like you destroy something, you do a trick, it, it gets over the top normally, and you've saved your guy, and you destroy an artifact. Alright, so... This is, I often don't end up running this, um, like that's how good black is, it's, uh, as an additional cross, sacrifice an artifact or creature, create, uh, draw two cards and create a map token, and the last one is the mythic, the ancient one, which seems like something that would be in uh, D&D as a set, um, it's quite a, it's a spirit god, I don't know else it was a god actually, uh, so this has, uh, this can't attack or block unless you've got to send eight. Uh, it has a ability for four where you, I think it's discard, draw a card then discard a card. And uh, you can target a player to mill equal to the mana value. It's an eight eight. I did have this in my pre-release. Um, I don't think I ever got it out. It was, I think it was just like killed too fast or. Maybe I did get it out, um, but I don't think I did that well with it, but uh, I didn't get that much black, so I think, or maybe I did, I can't, can't remember that much, but I thought it was a sick card, but the blue was just, uh, actually maybe I was mainly black and I splashed the blue, um, but never kind of got round to it. Uh, black green seems a really good pairing in this. I think red and white is okay. I think blue-black is okay, but you're relying on the black a fair bit. 
like green red is awesome blue red is awesome too actually surprisingly like blue red pirates i should say like pirates blue red is good uh, but it's not that much blue in that it's, it's a very red pirates um white blue seems very uh, mer to me uh, there is a thing that gets a full full golem but i don't think it can carry the whole thing when it flips over like i'd like uh golems to be a thing a gnome sorry no, no one. there's gnomes and golems in this but um uh, yeah so we got uh yeah uh one um one Jurassic Park card, I think. There are actually, like, tokens. I have the dinosaur uh, uh, token. It's a Jurassic Park card where it's got um, uh, the woman from the second movie taking photos of dinosaurs. And I've also got the one which is... I didn't sort of realise it, and then I uh, worked out what it was. It was... Uh, when um, the two guys... Uh, well, one of them's the hacker. Uh... uh this guy, Naughty, Naughty uh, is selling the, like, DNA, and they've got the DNA on the, like, uh, Hawaiian Islands, and they're sort of, like, buying it. Um, yeah, I thought that was very cool. Uh, I don't know how many different tokens they've done. I, I definitely like the lands a lot, where they flip over, uh, and they've got, like, kind of a, the park when it's successful, and the park when it's not successful um yeah i like those a lot uh, uh yeah anyway um yeah i don't think like just on uh, uh hasbro and uh wizards of the coast and magic I, like i think they've put out a lot of product um and there's a bit of like buy fatigue a bit in the community like i used to buy a box every set of magic I don't buy a box anymore. I, I still do drafts. I still play modern a little. Um, I more play drafts. I was always more a draft player. But, um, I don't think it's a quality thing. I think I think they just pump out too much stock. Like, I liked the Godzilla being in... Um, oh, it's not excellent. Um... Like, this is a few years ago now. Um, it feels like they do too many sets. Like, they had the Warhammer um, Commander decks. I think that was this year. Uh, they had Doctor Who. Uh, they had Lord of the Rings. <sighs> Jeez, I feel like that should be, like, a once-a-year thing almost. Or maybe not the Lord of the Rings and Doctor Who in the same year. Uh, it feels like they did a, a lot of different products. Um... Like, I don't think, I don't want anyone to get laid off, you know, I think that's horrible, but I don't think there's been a problem with, like, um, the quality of the game, in a sense, like the sets, I think they've, in a sense, been too much, and maybe even a bit underplayed from my end, um, yeah, um, Anyway, I uh, wish everyone a good night and a happy Christmas and New Year.